In the early stages, most, if not all online business owners don't have an email list. Now, if that sounds like you and you know you need an email list or you have a small list and you know it needs to grow, but you just aren't sure where to start, then this podcast episode is for you. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Online Business Launchpad podcast. I'm your host, Trudy Rankin. Now, every online business owner that I've listened to, talked with, or read about has one critical piece of advice for new businesses that want to grow, and that is to build your email list because Unlike other social platforms, you own your email list. It can't be shut down or taken away from you because someone else has changed an algorithm somewhere and all of a sudden your stuff just dries up and goes away. Now, your email list is an important part of your business assets, just like your website. And over the years, I've seen a lot of advice about building email lists. The main piece of advice was just to get started. Now, I was a bit shy okay, a lot shy, about asking people to join my email list at first. And I kept asking myself why anyone would want to read my emails. So I didn't put as much effort into it as I could have. And the result, it took me a lot longer to get my business off the ground than it should have. However, I didn't do nothing. I did try a bunch of different things. And I finally found ways of reaching out to people that gave them value and didn't make me feel yucky about the whole process. And I also learned that it's not the size of your email list that matters. It's how much the people on your list are interested in what you have to say and how much they think that you can help them. So having a thousand people signed up to your email list is pointless and can actually cost you money if no one is going to read those emails that you're going to eventually send them. So today, I want to share with you some of the things I did to get my email list started. Now, if you haven't got an email list yet, or if it's really, really small, then I'll explain how you can quickly and without too much effort, go from zero to 100 subscribers. Now, if you already have 100 people on your list, you can use some of these techniques to get you to your next goal. Now, you know, when I say easy, I mean the amount of time or effort involved. Sometimes, though, something that sounds easy actually gets way more complicated than it needs to be because of mindset issues. You know, the kind of mindset issues that can stop you from ever even getting started. And maybe that's something that's holding you back from starting your email list. So what am I talking about? Um, For example, I mentioned that I was really shy about asking people to join my list when I first was getting started. I wasn't, you know, quite sure what I was going to write about. And to be honest, I hadn't even quite nailed the services I was going to offer. Now that shyness, or you could call it lack of confidence, really slowed me down, but I didn't let that stop me from taking action. I reached out to a few people I knew really well and I very hesitantly asked them to join. And some of them said yes, and they told me that they were really interested in being able to watch and be part of my journey. And I realized that I didn't have to have my services completely nailed. These people were interested in what I was doing and they wanted to be supportive. So they said yes. And so that small handful of yeses made it easier to ask the next group of people and the next until I'd built up my list to over 100 people. And I'm going to share with you exactly what I did and how I did it, because if I did it, you can too. Even if you feel really shy or uncertain about what you're going to be right about in your emails, or you're still refining the services you offer or want to offer. So I started out by going through the contacts list on my computer picking out the people that I thought might be interested and then sending them a personal email telling them what I was doing and asking them if I could add them to my email list. And if they said yes, I added them by hand to the Aweber email account that I had set up. So my first tip to you is to invite people that you already know. Start with the people on your contacts list on your computer or on your phone. People like to be invited as long as it's done in a personalized, friendly way. People you already know usually like and trust you and are much more likely to say yes to an invitation, which of course is good for your confidence. And the second thing I did was to go through all my LinkedIn contacts and make a list of everyone I thought might be interested. This list was uh, actually quite a lot longer than what I got from my contacts list. So it did take a bit longer this time. Um, Plus, I was still feeling pretty shy, and I didn't want people to feel like I was only interested in in them because I wanted something. So these are people that I I knew, 
at least had some sort of contact with, but I didn't know them as well as the people that were on my contacts list for on my computer. So once again, I wrote a personal message to each of my LinkedIn contacts and I told them what I was doing and I asked them for permission I, I, and I asked them for permission to add them to my email list. And whether they said yes or no, you know, I always responded. One of the important things to me was not to wreck any relationships. Uh, I wanted to still be able to talk with people even if they said no. So I wasn't, in, you know, I wasn't offended or upset if they said no or didn't respond.